guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about what to do when people don't support you. <music> Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about something that's really quite a serious subject and it's basically what to do if your family or friends don't support you in your creative endeavours or business. And this happens quite often, more than you could think. Most creatives have probably stumbled across this at one point or another. And I actually wanted to film this video because a lovely viewer actually commented on one of my videos saying, what should I do if my family doesn't support me? And I find it really sad uh, when those circumstances could potentially hold you back from releasing your full potential as a business owner and a creative in general. So I just wanted to have a really casual sit down chat with you guys about this, uh, kind of the reasons why people might not support you um, and how I personally overcame this and how you hopefully could overcome this as well. First of all I just wanted to say a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video today. If you don't know Skillshare is an amazing online platform for creators like me and you or even if you're not creative and you want to get creative it is a fantastic resource and educational tool where other creators have shared advice and created many little courses that you guys can do so maybe if you want to learn a little bit more about about how to grow a business. They even have online courses for that as well. They've got so many amazing online courses and they're offering you guys two months free if you use the link in the description below, which is super, super handy. So definitely go check that out. I'm a huge advocate of always learning and growing and adapting and I think it could help you guys out. So thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let's get into the main core of the video. Uh, and I wanna first talk about why potentially people like family and friends who you would expect support of like the first people you would expect support of is obviously your family and friends that would be primarily who you would think would have you back but often the case when you're a creative or you're going off on your own and doing your own kind of thing you can run into obstacles where you find actually these are not supporting me at all the people who are close to me are not supporting me and that can really really hurt especially when you feel like nobody has your back and they don't see your vision that you've got in your head so i just wanted to outline some reasons why potentially those people aren't supporting you or giving you the support that you expected of them. Now I don't think you should blame anyone for this and kind of go in this with an open heart and be compassionate and empathetic for these reasons because not everyone's perfect and the first thing I want to talk about is love. It's coming from a place of love particularly if it's parents. They want what's best for you or what they think is best for you which is uh, the most important thing you have to understand parents if you say you're going to have an art career for example they may have seen media and their social circle kind of associate art with an unsustainable income an unreliable income and they just want what's best for you and they want a life where you're comfortable and happy and can pay the bills and you're not struggling and art is often associated with a struggling financial lifestyle and that's just the way the media has portrayed creative jobs in particular freelance jobs uh, they do associate it with kind of struggling financially and although this can be the case sometimes if you're clever with money and you are clever with your finances and invest well this does not have to be the case but they are just coming from a place of love they want you to do well and they don't want you to have to struggle and go through like the pain and the upset of being a failure or struggling financially or ending up on the streets essentially which of course is a extreme example but if you're a parent that is probably where they're coming from in that sense it's that place of love and protection for you reason number two is fear so maybe your friends aren't being very supportive or your sister or brother who's really close to you uh, because they feel Fear that the relationship is going to change so many times if you become successful or if you are changing as a person and adapting and growing and educating yourself and hopefully changing for the better your relationships might change and they might really fear that they might think what if they become super successful will they want to be my friend anymore will our dynamic change what if they're going to be really really busy and they're going to be away all the time on meetings or whatever the relationship is going to change in 
some form. And people don't like change. <laughs> they like a kind of routine. They like to know what they're gonna get and what they're gonna expect in life. And throwing something as big as opening a business or becoming a creative freelancer, it's gonna change dynamics. They're not used to it. They don't know how it's gonna pan out in their life. It's how it's gonna pan out in terms of friendship and your relationship dynamic. Maybe they were the provider and they're actually scared that you no longer need them as a provider financially or for whatever reason. Uh, maybe they're scared what this is going to do with your relationship. You just don't know. It comes from their own subconscious fears. Which leads me into number three is their own insecurities. Sometimes when you are brave enough to want to go out and pursue your own thing and you know really do what makes you truly happy and what you are really passionate about, this causes them to kind of reflect on themselves and bring out brings out their own insecurities and kind of maybe highlights failures in their life that they are not comfortable facing so it's kind of like looking in the mirror and thinking well I haven't chased my dreams and this ref this insecurity is kind of bounced off onto you which can be really upsetting but again it doesn't come from a place where it's a personal attack at you it comes from their own insecurities deep down because they have potentially not done what they love they reflect that insecurity back on you in terms of little support or kind of turning your back on you a little bit when you start talking about your business maybe they're not interested in hearing how well you're doing or um, how you're overcoming certain things and you feel like you can't talk to them about your business because they get a little bit of a weird vibe and that is nothing to do with you personally it's just maybe they're going through a really tough time and just have some sort of empathy and compassion towards that person or friend maybe they're stuck in a job that they absolutely hate and hearing of you going out and having um, the bravery to follow your own dreams which is a huge thing by the way when society constantly tells you how tricky it is and then that's their own insecurities bouncing back on onto you I just have to understand that that's where they're coming from and it can really hurt as a friend when you get that sort of response of someone it can be like oh my gosh like what have I done wrong like they clearly don't care and rather than being resentful and kind of really hating them and like holding a grudge just don't expect a support like that and just think they might be having a really hard time themselves in their career and maybe they're stuck in a lifestyle or a job that they really don't really like and they're not truly happy with. So try and be as compassionate and kind towards that type of response. Um, although it is quite toxic, just try and believe that it's not a personal attack. The fourth reason, which can be the hardest reason, is they genuinely think you cannot do it. And uh, maybe they've known you and you had a reputation of being a little bit lazy or something, when really you're not. You just haven't unlocked the true potential that you are capable of. I know before I started catnip, um, I definitely had a reputation of being like kind of a party animal going out and wasn't really took seriously. And still I'm not because I've kind of not taking myself seriously but when it came to my business and unlocking my true potential I educated myself I kept learning new things and people were quite surprised that I actually made it including people who were closest to me like Dean my fiance I don't truly believe he thought I could get to where I am today um, he always had faith in me and he did always support me and I think I shocked him a little bit about just how far I managed to take it and I'm only I feel at the very beginning of my journey so you have to surprise those people who genuinely think you know you're not capable of it uh, maybe it's because again the insecurities coming back in they're not capable of it or they think they're not capable of it because I think truly everyone is capable of really following and pursuing their dreams if they educate themselves if they develop skills and techniques to help themselves improve I truly believe that everyone can do this with the right education skills resources and tools which leads me on to how you can kind of overcome this lack of support from your family and friends. So the first thing that I used to do particularly when I first started out and I still worked full-time and I did catnip as a part-time thing is I used to read Etsy success stories. So Etsy used to have this um, like 
a section on their blog where the, it would be Etsy quit your day job and it was about people like just normal people, everyone's a normal person, business people are normal people, creators are normal people, the most famous illustrators and designers are also normal people, we've all been there, we've all started from zero followers, we all started from zero sales. The best thing to do is to read success stories from like-minded people or entrepreneurs in the field. I love those kind of started in the garage, started in my dad's bedroom, started in whatever. Uh, mine started personally in my small two bedroom house, I had a little spare bedroom, I started doing portraits, custom portraits, and I would sell through Facebook and I would send PayPal invoices. That's how I started in my little room. And now I have two studio spaces, two small studio spaces. I've not made it big or anything, but I still think I'm a newbie. I only went completely full time in Catnip this year without relying on client work. It's just completely from my own e-commerce store and my own stuff. I started through reading on my breaks, lunch breaks, the Quit Your Day Job by Etsy and I found it really, really, really inspiring. And then I moved on to things like podcasts. So podcasts were so handy because you can kind of have it in the background. So whenever I came back from a full-time job and I'd work on my commissions, I used to stick on an inspiring podcast. Podcast from say like Tony Robbins about personal development, personal improve, like how to improve, not just about business improving, about personal developing. And I'd listen to a variety of podcast. Um, creative Pep Talk by Andy J Pizza was really, really handy because he got other creatives in and interviewed them about how they became a successful freelancer or creative. The Honest Designer Show by Tom Ross, uh, which I was actually on, which is so weird. I can't believe I was actually on there. It was kind of some sort of weird... I don't know, inception going on when I actually turned out to be on a podcast myself. How strange, because I used to be just one of those people who used to watch YouTube videos about Etsy success, Etsy tips, listen to those podcasts, and now, for some reason, I've now become one of those people. It's all about that visualization and, yeah, really believing in yourself, which is what I think podcasts and listening to that sort of content helps you become, because you think, oh, these guys were just like me. like. I could become like them too. Um, you don't have to be special, you just have to be willing to learn, educate and improve yourself. Which brings me on to number two is education. I am a big advocate, I always say, like Skillshare is the sponsor of this video, but I am truly a big believer in education. It's always up in your education. So maybe you're just starting out when you're 60, when you're 40, it does not matter. Just educate yourself on the new tools like social media marketing. At first, I used to go on YouTube and search tutorials, how to grow my Instagram, how to grow my Facebook, how to make enamel pins, for example. And I used to watch studio vlogs of other people. Uh, Fran Nerd was one of the first ever illustrators I discovered and I absolutely loved her insight because I got to see what she was doing to be a successful illustrator, freelancer. So educating yourself and absorbing that sort of content is really, really helpful. I used to take notes when I used to watch YouTube videos and uh, when I used to watch TED Talks as well, I used to take notes and I kind of educated myself. Just that education gives you that confidence and comfort you really know what you're talking about and yeah it just makes you more confident in your skill and your capabilities and helps you kind of overcome imposter syndrome which is something that I really struggle with now but education is definitely important and education can come from a variety of different things whether it's from reading blogs about how to grow Pinterest for example, how to create sublimation prints like mugs and mouse mats. I learned all that through reading forums online, through reading blog posts. I had to consume a lot of content and then it was trial and error and I taught myself essentially. But education is definitely key you can get it in a variety of sources. Which leads me on to my next point, which is networking. Uh, sometimes networking can be absolutely crucial and beneficial to your business. So like I say, I've just been on that business course and I networked with other business owners and it was great. We got chatting and now I have connections and genuine friends that I can network with. Now you don't have to go on business courses or networking meetings, but it is really valuable going on a networking meeting, maybe in your local area, there's a networking meeting for uh, local businesses or something along those lines. It's great to go ahead to them if you want to try them out, maybe it's not for you. 
if it's not for you doing normal networking, I have to admit I don't do it often, but I am open to it, uh, then networking online is really good. Now, I network online. I've made genuine friends and connections through YouTube um, and through Instagram and Facebook. By genuinely connecting with that person, sharing tips with one another is invaluable. The first ever pin manufacturer that I found was through networking and making friends online. Now, I didn't just go up to that person and say, who is your pin manufacturer, for example. I genuinely had a connection with that person and had been chatting with them and I mentioned that I wanted to make pins and because we'd made friends and we were chatting with each other and we networked um, alongside each other she was willing to give that information to me which was so so very kind of her shout out to Lindsay at Nutmeg and Arlo who I'm talking about here I had that option open to me because I made genuine connections online and then I actually discovered that some of the people I'd been chatting with were actually local to me so we ended up meeting up and we used to go out for coffee and we actually did a clear workshop for a few weeks every Tuesday we would go and meet up and that was all from making online friends and networking connecting with each other helping each other out giving each other tips um it's really really helpful to be around like-minded creatives I actually met up with a bunch of creatives last year in a meetup on Instagram so definitely make genuine networking connections and surround yourself by like-minded people creatives in your field and things like that now when people family and friends don't support you it can be hard to believe in yourself when you the closest of your friends and family don't even believe in you but you really have to have ultimate belief in yourself and networking listening to those powerful empowering podcasts listening to people who have done well uh, that really can be an empowering feeling think you know what I can do this and do you know what you can do this like honest to gosh I am sat here chatting with you guys and I didn't have a YouTube channel I had zero followers I didn't even have a name I used to be in a full-time job I used to just sit and read Etsy day jobs thinking wow I'd really like to do that one day and here I am and it's all thanks to those reasons and I did have people who doubted me and didn't give me full support but I love them regardless and I don't blame any of them because at the end of the day you are in charge of your own destiny or you can go out and chase those dreams and really believe in yourself and listen to people who tell you it's possible because as Walt Disney says if you can dream it you can do it and it really really is true guys don't just say oh this is true but blah blah and think of an excuse it really can be possible for you guys there will be obstacles in the way there will be life events which just throw up which think wow life is really getting in the way of my dreams right now but if you keep persevering keep educating yourself and keep doing all these things and really surrounding yourself with positive like-minded people you can do it honestly i'm sat here now and i'm having a really emotional feeling welling over me because i've just realized that I have made what I wanted to do. I've made it. I've done what I've wanted to do. But now I have more goals on top of that. But if you told me three years ago that this is where I would be now, employing my beautiful sister, my brother-in-law, having two little studio spaces and chatting to you guys about success, I wouldn't have believed you at the time. I started having that belief in myself when I started listening and educating myself on just how possible it is. So if you sat here, you've got zero sales or maybe you've even started, uh, the fact that you're just on this video listening to this is step number one. Uh, and that is that you are willing to adapt, change and educate yourself on how to grow as a person and how to grow as a business. So yeah. So I hope you found this video helpful this is just me throwing my two cents in I'm not a like coach I'm not like you know a therapist or anything this is just my personal two cents I'm a normal person from the north of England who always got told you had to move to London and you had to move to a major city to do well in illustration and don't believe them guys you really can we've got the internet at the palms of our hands now we can connect with people all across the world and globally and honestly guys if i can do it a normal 
girl from the north of England who watches anime, plays games, enjoys cute, kawaii, fluffy things, then you guys can do it too, honestly. So thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you got some value out of this. Yeah. Thank you again to my patrons who help support me and help me sit down with you guys and record these videos because without them, I wouldn't be able to dedicate the time to do it. And thank you guys so, so much for making this possible for me. Um, share this video if you found it helpful to other people who may be stuck and yeah believe in yourself and have your own back and show those naysayers what we can really do i'll see you very soon guys thank you so much for watching all right then love you <laughs>